Hey everybody, it's Katrina from ESU8 and I'm just coming to you with another high quality uh, instructional material that you can use in your classroom. So this is uh, from stanford.edu or SHEG, the Stanford History Education Group. This is a great website to use. Uh, you can create a free account and it gets you access to all kinds of good materials and resources and lessons and assessments that you can use in your classroom. I just wanted to take a few minutes to take you through this website today. Um, so the first part here, uh, you can see is called Reading Like a Historian. This is definitely part of um, the new instructional shifts with uh, the social studies standards is historical thinking. Um, and so this piece really focuses on reading like a historian. And of course they have some embedded videos in here um, and all kinds of links that can take you to um, materials, including materials that are available for you in Spanish. Over here, you can sort by uh, the type of history that you want to look at. Um, and then of course you can go into each of these um, lessons if you want to scroll through, there's quite a few. And um, of course, you might want to filter these depending on what you're looking at. I'm just going to real quick go into a US history um, and click on uh, the Puritans uh, because I taught English language arts and I taught the crucible. And part of that was uh, talking about Puritans and Puritan literature um, and colonial literature. So uh, this particular lesson, of course, you'll see here, it starts with a question, which is great because that is the essence of these instructional shifts of inquiry. So starting with a question gives you um, the objectives and what students will be able to do. And then down here, you can download your materials, teacher materials, student materials, and original documents. So primary documents, would be great. You can also do a quick view to look at those. And um, you can zoom in on these here. So you have your central question, and this wouldn't necessarily be that um, compelling question. Uh, this would be a content-based question, but certainly you could use this lesson to fall under a particular unit of study that does have a compelling question that is much more um, vague and use this as supplemental uh, lessons in order to uh, help students uh, formulate their own um answer to your compelling question at the beginning of the unit. So this is really great because it's a complete lesson plan, tells you exactly what you can do. Of course, you can eliminate and customize based on your time needs um, and also has citations uh, for those primary documents. So this is a great opportunity uh, to get some ready-made lessons that you can customize if you need to. And there's a lot of different varieties in here um, between the US history and the world history. So. It's like I should open this one too, Salem Witch Trials. We spent um, quite a bit of time talking about that in American literature. Um, then you can go over here and go beyond the bubble. And this really focuses on assessment. And this is great also because it can help you um, dig into your assessments and make them more um, meaningful to students. And again, you can um, base those assessments on what skill it is that you're trying to assess. So this really focuses on, again, on that instructional shift and focusing on the skill rather than just the content. So if you're wanting to assess the students on their ability to use evidence, which is a major part of the instructional shift of these standards, um, and then you have a particular lesson that you're focusing on, you can use some of these assessments, but you can also just use these as sort of a... Um, springboard into creating your own assessment, but an assessment based on the skill, not the content of the history necessarily, um, as those are supposed to kind of work together. So if you were studying, for example, a compelling question, um, the role of women in history, this might be an assessment that you could use um, and you could customize it based on your um, skills that you're trying to assess um, in your lessons. Um, then there's this component of civic online reasoning. Uh, I showed you this website last week, so I'm not going to take you through it, but um, because it is linked here, uh, it's a major part of um, these inquiry-based standards as well. So um, other than that, you can go over here to projects. And of course, there's the COR again, but then there it leads you to other great um, 
organizations and resources that you could also use. Um, and you can scroll through those and see if some of those would meet your needs. And then publications, um, other articles that might be of use to you as well. So I hope that this is another resource, uh, if you're not familiar with it, that you could use. And I think that it could offer you some great opportunities to just enhance what you're already doing in your classroom. I hope you have a great day. Thanks.